I, I think that uh, certainly it's an exciting time in ovarian cancer because um, building off of the results of Solo One, where we saw the uh, significant advantage to adding a PARP inhibitor for those with a germline or somatic mutation, we now see that there's an potentially advantages um, from the data that we learned in Barcelona at ESMO in 2019, now published in the New England Journal of Medicine, and the study being PALO-1 that you just alluded to, where not only do patients with germline and somatic mutations benefit from PARP, in, or from PARP inhibition or the addition of PARP uh, to their treatment, but you also see really the, the same type of thing for all comers. And, and I think that that data is, is something that is very important for the uh, audience to understand. So if you look, if you look at PAL-1, um, you know, in the BRCA group, uh, we saw a hazard ratio of 0 0.31, uh, which compares very favorably to what we saw in SOLO-1, which was exactly the same essentially, where it was 0 0.3. So that's re very reassuring. What's interesting though is, and I think a lot of people forget about this, with PAL-1, you're not only, um, comparing it to a control arm, but that control arm is an FDA approved active drug in the case of bevacizumab. So this study did a two to one randomization to receiving either the Olaparib plus bevacizumab or the bevacizumab plus placebo. So in that placebo arm or the control arm, you actually had Bev, which, is, which we know very well is active. So um, very interesting in terms of looking at that. And then we have this whole concept of homologous recombination deficiency. So these are patients that don't have a germline or somatic mutation, but other, have other genes and other pathways where they have the phenotype as if they had a BRCA mutation. And so we, we expect them to behave similarly, maybe not quite as great in terms of magnitude of effect, but very similarly in terms of the patterns of a response to a PARP inhibitor and capitalizing upon the leverage of these DNA pathways that we can drug. And so indeed, if you look at the, the results from PALO-1, if you look at the HRD population that included those that had a BRCA mutation, we didn't see really much movement. So 0 0.31, right, for the BRCA mutated, it only went up to 0 0.33 if you, if you took all, uh, all the HRD patients. And what's interesting is if you pull out those BRCA patients, so now you don't have those in your group, and you're just looking at HRD alone. So these are patients who have exhibited homologous recombination deficiency, and we pull out those with a BRCA mutation, either somatic or germline, you still see uh, a significant effect. 